my name is Edgar Hernandez. I've been here since I was two years old. I um, was born in Houston. We moved here when I was two, but I have been here my entire life. I started um, sort of pursuing art um, in my late 20s, I would say. I went to school for advertising and started kind of getting into the creative world in that, in that sense of like helping, you know, develop like campaigns and taking an artistic approach to how, you know, brands sort of kind of portray themselves and all that. So then I decided that I wanted to kind of start my, start my own sort of creative agency. And so then I enrolled at Kendall and started taking design classes there. And that led to me starting my own uh, label. Uh, so I started uh, an apparel company and then opened up a shop and started doing a lot of design work, a lot of merchandise, more, more or less like fashion and merch and apparel design. Um, then freelance graphic design. And then I started doing some public art and a couple of murals. And here we are today. We're gonna hopefully, you know, work on this and have a successful like um, uh, piece for, for our prize at Heartside Park. The project is that project and I'm calling it the Heartside Park Basketball Court Project. It might change to maybe Ball is Life. I'm not sure. We'll see. <laughs> If people can really start sort of um, thinking about how spaces are used and interacted with, like so reimagining spaces, right? So like what a, a court or a park or a plaza or a parking lot or whatever, like uh, spaces that are made for a gathering, you know, it's like reimagining those spaces right even 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 if it is an existing park you know how can this park be different um, how can we make it uh, where it's, uh, there's more more life and that is actually being used right so like can I uh, maybe, maybe build a skate park here you know so I think um, it, it doesn't have to be obviously that but it's really I think the messaging more or less is like hey okay like just reimagining common spaces and like sort of questioning how, why they are the way they are. The idea for the entry um, really started um, because I was really looking into doing, um, a, there was a program through Art Prize for curators to take over a site. So there was like a curator's, I don't know what if they call it a curator's grant or a grant basically to curate a space and work with other artists. So they had a list of different sites throughout downtown to kind of choose from and, and, um, and that's kind of how it started. I started kind of looking at the different, uh, different locations and you know obviously there's like the, the really like popular sites like you know by the river and Calder Plaza and like all these you know really amazing incredible like highly trafficked locations. And I, I wanted to do something that uh, was in a location that wasn't really highly trafficked, that was kind of off the beaten path a little bit. Um, with Heartside Park, you know, it, even though it is in, considered downtown, it is a little bit more on the outskirts, on the on kind of on the fringe a little bit. So you don't see a, a lot of people walking, you know, through the park or down that area unless you're going to like a downtown market. Um, I'm pretty familiar with that, with that court and that area just because I had a, a shop um, right there next door um, just um, not too long ago and I had I had a shop there for like three years so you know always drove by it walked by it you know and I noticed that it wasn't really used you know and so once I had this opportunity of like hey potential sites I was like you know I, I like I love the sport you know it's like okay this is something that's already here how can I uh, maybe take this and do something cool with it, you know, so that was I think a couple of the reasons why I, uh, I selected that site and kind of the idea sort of started from there. If you really kind of, if you start looking at public parks and basketball courts, full-size basketball courts, in the downtown sort of Heritage Hill area. Um, there aren't very many within the downtown um, district. And so Heartside truly is kind of the only outdoor basketball court, right? So 
it was one it was really one of the main reasons like well why is the only court that is down like downtown in such terrible shape right like why does it look so bad like we always talk about like you know creating these uh you know spaces and you know attractions right to bring people in and make this a beautiful place and all of that and so um you know why is something like that that's so it is you know obviously there for everybody to use not not been worked on or and so i was like well if if we want to create like you know i guess an environment in a city that attracts people and brings you know other things and not have to happen like within our city limits like you have to create these spaces that are obviously like not only functional but are also uh, attractive right like can, can, can we make something that's vibrant and that is um, you know like a, a gathering space for anybody and everybody to use and I think when you start looking at parks even Cherry Hill is a great park you know the playground's great the, there's a splash pad and so the tennis court is great but it's why is the basketball court always like the last thing that's ever like worked on or neglected entirely. I don't I don't understand that. I feel like um, after obviously work now doing some research on like cost. Yeah, it can be costly, but it all there's also ways to you know to to make it at least look presentable where the kids can use it and not um, be like a hazardous place for them to play. You know, so I think there's little things that can be done. You don't have to like fully renovate a whole you know court but there are little things that you can do to make it you know where the kids can actually use it again so I think you know Hearthside Park was one that was like probably in the worst shapes that I've seen like there's there's literally cracks on that court that are about two and a half to three inches wide about four and a half inches deep and literally run across the court so 55 feet long that's just one crack you know so like wow like <laughs> Like, what's going on here? You know, it's like, oh, that makes sense why people aren't using this court, why the kids aren't using this court. Okay, so can, what can I do to, to maybe change that, right? So uh, that's, that's, I think, the main reason why I chose Heartside. It'll be great for people to obviously come and check it out and connect with it in whatever way they connect with it. But I think about it past the three week, uh, you know, the three weekends of our prize, right? Like, what happens with the space afterwards? Um, so I think about that. It's like, past the art installation, how will this actually serve um, the community, right? So people are going to interact with it after our prize is long gone, right? Or not long gone, but over. It's like, okay, this if if it's if it's done right and it's um, and it's fixed, then. Anybody can use it at any time they want, you know? And like, I think, you know, the thing about basketball and sports, it's like it brings people together. You know, you, can, you connect with people, you meet people, you know, it keeps kids, um, you know, off the streets and doing other things, you know? Um, when you have uh, parks that are beautiful and parks that attract the youth, right? So like, I think if you have a destination point for like that community and for really, city and downtown in general I think that's um, that's one of the reasons why I think it's it's so important to kind of like look at like okay cool can we make art yeah sure can we make something that's uh, that's cool sure but how can we take those things and apply it to a functional space shows can happen on the on that court right a performance it could be something that's planned or it could be like impromptu like you know something like a, an acoustic set right so uh, that's a nice thing about that like so you if you can you know, it really only takes somebody with an imagination and an idea, obviously, and a little bit of maybe a little bit of support to make something happen. And that's a beautiful thing about a basketball court. It's a basketball court, but it can be used for so many other things, you know. Art connects people because, like, obviously it's perceived differently for everybody sees it, sees something different, right? And I think that alone is a connection point. Like, what, what I see, is solely different because of my experience, whether I was involved in making it or just like my experience growing up with that particular thing, you know? So you, you connect with somebody or with a stranger by simply having a conversation about that, right? And like, I think that that's cool within its itself. I think about um, like growing up, I was really in, into like architecture and I thought I was gonna be like I thought I was gonna pursue that as a, like a career, like an architect, and I didn't. But I think about that often too, when, especially when like um, 
looking at spaces, existing spaces, and what they can be. So really kind of reimagining what those spaces could look like. That you can basically um, almost like do whatever you want, right? Like kids have a crazy wild imagination. Like, you know, a lot of times they're, they're just not taken seriously. They're just like, you know, oh, that's cool, you know, but they're not really given an, like an opportunity to develop those ideas, you know, like those. And, and they're sometimes really great, but like as adults, we don't, sometimes don't give them the time of day, you know? And I think when kids see the court, I think they'll be like not only excited, like, oh, this is cool, like, but I think if they if they learn about what went into it and like um, how like say for instance like it was really more or less like a, a DIY okay like DIY approach to like to redoing this court like if you have an idea you should put a little time and effort into maybe developing that idea even if somebody tells you no right even if maybe your your teacher or your parents says oh yeah that's cool like don't stop there even if you're not uh, being encouraged or supported, um, I think that it's important for you to at least explore those things, right? Like, it may not go anywhere, it may not turn out as you thought it would, but like, at least you got it out of your system, at least you saw it through. And I think that's, I think that's really important. Joy, happiness, I don't know. Uh, I don't, you know, I, sometimes it's just like, think about it like, simple things right the simple things of life is like what makes people happy you know being together and being outside and playing you know gathering and that's really really what it comes down down to i mean i don't know how people will will feel about it but i i'm happy when i play you know with other with other people whether i know them or not whether i lose or win you know it's still fun it's still great you know and so i think overall i just want a place for, that brings a smile to most people's faces You can literally take, you know, a bucket of paint and like repaint the lines that might be faded on your court. Say, hey, I traditionally, yeah, I see an orange trim, but like, hey, if I have maybe a little bit of help from an adult and have like a ladder, maybe I, maybe I can either paint it a different color without taking removing it. Maybe you remove it and paint it something a color your favorite color. You know, same thing with backboards, right? If it's a steel aluminum backboard, wood backboard, whatever kind of backboard you have. If you're if you are an artist or you like to draw or illustrate, why not maybe paint on it? You know, maybe maybe put an illustration on there. You know, and you can always change it. You know, as you grow, you get into different things. You like different things. Your style also changes. You get better at drawing, and you can also just paint over it and do it all over again, right? Or you can invite your friends and be like, Hey, do you want to do this on a Saturday? We're gonna get some paint and like paint the paint the surface on our court or paint the post, you know? There's little things like that, or even like setting up an actual, like say a uh, little tournament, an exhibition game with all the kids from the neighborhood. You know, yeah, it might take a little work organizing that and getting it all put together, but that alone is fun. And then there's like different ways that you can get involved in, within your own neighborhood without needing an organization or, you know, a lot of money to do it. So I think, I think that's that's really cool. Look at see what supplies you might have at home, what you can afford from the hardware store. Maybe ask people, you know, ask around. A lot of times it's just ask around like, hey, do you have this? Can I borrow this? Do you have a little bit of extra paint? Do you have a ladder I can borrow? You know, things like that. Obviously, proceed with caution, be safe while you do it. But um, yeah, I think you can do that in your own backyard. I think about just like, um, doing something for for the greater good right like for a community you know I think that that addresses you know the social aspect of things right and like you can kind of go so many different ways with that like if we dive into this like why are I, I don't know the reasons why this court has been sort of uh, not that it's been forgotten about it could be just simply funding right it could be just like a funding thing like well there's no money to do anything with this court right now and that could be the simple thing right but like i don't know there's i go to wilcox park all the time and that's where i actually play basketball because that court is really nice you know and so you kind of start seeing sort of like the differences in public spaces based on neighborhoods like as blunt as that is like and 
it's unfortunate, it really is unfortunate. Although this piece may not say like something like, it, it, there's not a, a clear message about um, addressing social injustices, but I think doing something about it, like, you know, physical work to, you know, repair something, fix something, and um, sort of rehab something, I think um, can be a form of um, addressing that without really saying that, you know? Just like do it, you know, right? So if you do want, if that's your intention to have a conversation about it and really um, talk to people about what you're going through or you know what how you see the world or how you see certain things, do it, right? So uh, put yourself out there. It might be really uncomfortable. It might be, um, you could be may maybe really nervous about it and you don't know how people might take it, right? But that's, if that's your, your goal, right? To have conversation. It's not gonna be. It's not gonna be always easy. It's not gonna be comfortable, right? So, but like, that's how that's how we make progress. And I think that's what you. Should, I mean, if that's how you, if you feel strongly about something, you should definitely do something about it. You know, whether it's expressing it in an art form or just saying it out loud verbally to somebody or putting it out there in whatever way you think is best. I think go for it. I think for sure it's it's important for us to always express like you know. If you, if you see something that's not right, you know, if you think somebody's being wronged or, or, or somebody's being neglected or ignored or mistreated, you should be vocal about that, you know. I think that's really, really important. I don't, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter who you are. You know, I think if you see something, you should stand up not only for yourself, but stand up for others that may not have a voice. I guess I would say like ball is life. Like there's that that saying has been. I've seen it. I've heard it so many times just growing up. And it's like you know I've seen it in memes. You know, but it really if if you kind of you know break that down a little bit, it really um, is about how much good and positive comes out of the love of a sport and and playing. I think that. That, that key word of life. Even though that may not entirely describe the project, I, I, I'm kind of like taking that sort of, uh, that sort of little phrase with me and like, okay, you know, how do we make this look beautiful, right? How do we make this look vibrant, you know, with color and green and flowers and, you know, and so I think that might be, it's only three words, I guess. <laughs> um, the other would be like, just do it, even though like this is not, sponsored by Nike at all, but like, hey, if you have an idea, like, just go out and do it, right? Like, if you have an opportunity, um, if you have just a little bit of support, like, do it. Even if you don't have support, like, go out and pursue your true passions and your dreams. Like, that's, as humans, that is our purpose, is to really follow our true passions. You know, whatever really drives you, whatever little fire you have in your heart, whatever that is, you know, Maybe do something about it. Maybe maybe explore that a little bit. See how far that takes you. See where that takes you. See maybe how happy that might actually make you. You might be surprised at how fulfilled you will be by actually going out and doing something yourself.